Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a keyboard that I've seen floating around for a while. I have taken a look at another keyboard and it's it's a keyboard of contention uh, that, don't get me wrong, it's a, it sounds great out of the box and if you never plan to mod it, I guess it, it's a great keyboard, the CDU V65. But, I have now gone through four units, two of the V1, two of the V2, and well, let's just say that I found serious quality controls with each. Now, I do know that that is CDU and Final Key. Uh, that you sh that They've gone by many other names, but it was a collaboration between the two. But this one is the ABM 084, and it's just a CDU keyboard. So it was on sale on Amazon the other day, and I was like, well, let's go ahead and give it a shot, because I know Final Key or... Fancy Tech, or whatever name they go by this week. Um, I've had bad experiences them, with them on more than one occasion, and they just they don't seem like very honest people, in my opinion. But let's see if there's a difference, because I've never take, taken a look at a CDU only keyboard. So let's go ahead and open her up and see what we've got. Now, I have seen this one floating around for a while, and I actually like the looks of it, so... Kind of hoping I'm gonna like what I find. Alright, so nice wax paper. Oh, that's uh that's bright. You're not gonna miss. <laughs> you won't lose this dust cover. And it has the logo so you know which keyboard it fits to, so that's nice. Oh, and it's got the midnight color. Nice presentation so far I, I kind of like uh, it's got an eggshell carton uh, but I mean that does just as much to protect as, as foam does but let me see we've got a user manual on here all right it's just a sheet folded up but on the box we have a few extra keys so I guess there are some novelties or some different ones up there I guess if you wanted to use different ones, you've got these three different ones that match the uh, colorway, which is a, looks like a midnight run. Now, when I first got one of these CDs, I was like, oh, look, it's caskets. No, wait a minute, they're hard. These are actually light diffusers to go inside of all the switches, and it makes the uh, LEDs much brighter. And then we've got your standard switch and keycap puller, and then a nice nylon braided with a uh, zip tie or a um, Velcro tie, a USB A to USB C cable. It's very nice, good quality. And here we are, the ABM 084. So this is um, very interesting. The finish on this is it's got a very light texture, but it's uh, it wants to collect grease. Now I have, I believe this is called the Midnight Run or Night Run. Midnight Run, Night Run, something like that. Um, but is it die sub? I don't know. They just there's something about the keys that look off to me. Now they're double shot, huh? I wonder what it is. Maybe it's just the legends. Hmm. Or is the yellow just too bright? I don't know. I have to figure that one out. Now it does have a very rounded body, which is new. I don't see too many that have. They're usually sharp, brutalistic edges, but, huh. So this one, it's round all around. That's very interesting. Uh, and we have a nice little pocket here. Feels like it's magnetic for the dongle. So that's always good. And then we have red switches, interesting color, but so we've got on and off as well as Windows and Mac. Our USB port is just there. It doesn't seem to be really recessed except on the top, but it should work with most cables. Hmm. All right, does this have a steel plate? Oh, are these creams? No. Oh, these are the mat switches. Yeah, these are 
actually really decent switches. Uh, they, they're also used on the uh, V65 series. But see how they have that long face. <laughs> um, that's for those light diffusers to fit into, to slide into. Alright, so down here it looks like we have oh, just PCB. There is no sheet over it, and yep, there is a, what I think could be silicone rubber between the plate and the PCB, and the, and the plate is steel. That's what I thought. And there does seem to be a very light open cell foam down below the PCB in the case. So, we're dealing with a steel plate. I'm finding more and more often uh, different different plates uh, for what would be considered you know cheaper or more affordable keyboards so I'm actually <laughs> I'd like to see the day when there's no steel plates and I don't think steel should be used in the keyboards aluminum PC palm heck ABS I don't care but steel plate that's just my opinion, though. So we do have this uh, this knob, though. It's it's angled up and in, so it's kind of it's like because it doesn't have a, even any ridges along it or any sort of texture. Like I guess I mean my fingertips are dry, but still, I like to be able to just and it doesn't want to move. Let's check out the stabilizers. Well, the stabilizers are very well attached. Very well attached. Oh yeah, they got some tight tolerances on these. And they are very lubricated. I would say overly lubricated, but I'm not going to take them apart and clean them right now. Yeah, there's oil all along the wire. So, there's oil all along the PCB. That's a lot. I mean, there's a little pool of oil right there. That's a lot of oil. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to put the whole bottle in. A little goes a long way. Surprised they don't sound squishy with as much oil as they've got. Now, if you're looking for clack, this just might be it. I mean, especially if you flip out these switches and put in some Akos in there. I'm going to get some clack. Because these um, cork mat switches are, uh, I believe they're pre-lubricated. Um, they'd have zero ping, so the sound can focus. There's no ping whatsoever, even though it's a steel plate. I, I can honestly say it does not sound too bad. And just a little bit. I mean, adding some, some PCB... Uh, Pour-on pads, some switch pads onto the PCB, and uh, doing a Tempest tape mod. And depending on what sound you wanted to do, either take out the foam in the bottom case and replace with something light, or even do a silicone pour. I think this keyboard could actually sound pretty good. Let's see what it looks like when we plug her in. We can see the RGB, but obviously it would be much better if we were dealing with a PC plane. It's uh, not the brightest, but it's pretty bright. 
that's not the brightest I've seen, but it's pretty, pretty, pretty bright. And I think actually adding the diffuser would make a big difference. I've read also that the diffuser changes the tone of the switches, so I may come back and do that at a different time. I'm actually surprised at how well it sounds. At first I was like, oh, that's quite heavy. But it's obviously that steel plate that's making up for most of that weight. The RGB seems to be pretty good. Let's see if I can... cycle through some effects. Yep. Takes care of the volume. I thought that would be brightness, but hmm. I don't know. I kinda like it. I kinda like it, but I kinda I think the legends are just I don't know. Uh now this is uh, this appear to be cherry. It is north facing, right? Yeah, it's north facing. Now it's definitely a cherry profile. I say you can always tell with the enter key. That's a cherry profile. Stabilizers are pretty good. Despite it having a steel plate, it doesn't really seem to hinder it. I'm not the craziest about that knob. doesn't feel like it can come off. Oh. Alright. It's one of those that has a very shallow collar. It's hard to find replacement knobs for this. And now that I look at it, it does have... Um, I forgot what that pattern's called, but... It feels almost completely smooth. It's almost like it's drawn on there. I mean, I can feel it, but it's just the slightest, and it's not enough to really catch, in my opinion. So yeah, there's not going to be a lot of D-knobs that will fit this shallow of a, um, So it was wrong. That fits just fine. That one almost works. But this one definitely works. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Just the specs. Today we took a look at the SeaDoo ABM-084, a three-mode TKL with a 3000 mAh battery and Pro software for rebinding keys and doing per-key RGB. It is loaded with Bluetooth 5 with three device slots, 2.4 GHz with a magnetic dongle pocket at the bottom of the case, as well as USB-C. It weighs in at 1,012 grams. This keyboard is available in several colorways with several different key switch choices depending on which merchant you pick it up from. I purchased this from Amazon with a coupon that knocked almost $40 off of the price. This one is loaded with cork matte linear switches. This keyboard manufacturer retail price is $89.99. The chin of this keyboard sits at 20 millimeters off the surface, while the back sits at 32 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of seven degrees. Raising the first included set of feet will 
raise the back up to 40 millimeters, changing the angle of typing to 11 degrees. And using the final set of flip out feet, the back will raise to 46 millimeters of height with a 14 degree typing angle. So this isn't that bad of a keyboard, especially uh, I paid 53 for it. Though at $90, I kind of have a hard time justifying is the market has really changed and there are a lot better choices. Now, though, I mean, granted this keyboard is ready to go out of the box. Um, if you like clack, because it is loud. It is really loud, but I kind of like that, so but other people or office space I can't speak to. Um, it does say that they're die sub. They kind of look like die sub legends, but um, when you look at the bottom of them, they look like they're, uh, they, they say that they're die sub keycaps, PBT keycaps on the website, though it looks like they're double shot um, from below. So I, I'm not really sure what to make of that because it definitely looks like a double shot to me. Um, probably they just got their marketing off. So, other than that, I mean, like I said, the steel plate is a little bit, um, at this price point, it should be something better, even an aluminum plate, or sp especially a PC plate. Uh, that would lean me more towards this keyboard, but I'm still kind of on the fence about it, I gotta say. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on this keyboard, especially if you own it. What do you think about it long-term use? Because I'm still on the fence on whether I'm going to keep this or not. Anyway, I'm going to leave you guys with the stock sound test of the Sea-Doo ABM-084. I'd love to hear your feedback on it. Uh, let's start a conversation. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on. <laughs>